Hey, um, video number four of the series of the video from Lithuania. Again, I'm repeating one of the clips just to give you a preview of what we're talking about. The device that approximately uses about 3 watts of power, that is 100, 100 watts to the light bulb. Even that that we see in here, the light bulb might not look in full brightness, the backlight compensation. But let's say, okay, it's not a full brightness. What difference does it make? It's more than 3 watts. So, <laughs> let's say we have a 50 watt. Fine, 3 watts to 50 watts. And the comparison that we have used in order to measure that, the box on the table, on the left hand side, is the power supply. The difference between the power drawn by the power supply without the load and the power supply uh, with the load, about 3 watts. Let's say 4 watts. I'm going to explain two concepts that we have. One is with the coil capacitor, and the other concept is with regular pickup coil. I'm going to give you all of the details of how it works and what it does. I recommend you to look at the uh, video number one, two, and three from the series of Lithuania over unity experiments. In this part, we see coil capacitor. Actually, how to wind the coil capacitor from the aluminium tape. It's isolated with the paper. We use additional foil. There is a scotch tape, very heavy duty used uh, to, um, for the parcels. Now, this is just the experiment showing how to wind it. We did not show in here how we put a foil in between. You see the inner ends of the coil capacitor. They are bended together. And then you will see how they wind it on the form. Later on that form will be cut it out and uh, it will be short one it's too long just uh, we were playing how we're gonna be able to make it happen but the technique is exactly the same well, they are talking here about four meters of length of each ribbon and you're gonna see also on that ribbon a partially placed clear foil which is uh, additional insulation factor, yeah, you see it in here right now. Okay, that's uh, how we made a real capacitor. The first attempt that you've seen was just to find out how it is going to perform and looks like. Find out that we need more insulation for the high voltage. The schematic on the computer screen is known as Aquarium Capenazzi concept. On the right hand side of the bar you see the capacitor, the coil capacitor similar to the one that we are trying to construct. This is not my schematic. But we going close. There were three people who were winding that, helping each other. So we roll it as a pancake according to the Tesla concept. By that token, we have these two strips insulated together. Again, this capacitor was again unwinded, and we use additional insulation in between these two ribbons all together. Pretty easy to be done. This structure has extremely increased capacitance compared to regular coil. 
it does also have the inductive component. So inductive reactors and capacitive reactors is present here. You see Ida's widening the capacitor on right hand side. Now Antana's reporter is holding the tape with his hand. You've seen, yes, this guy is Gintas, who is a very bright person. An uh, old good school. And I'm filming it. <laughs> uh, I had nothing to do more at that point. There was no place for the fourth guy. To do. Then you're gonna see how the end is gonna look like. All of the wording that we have used in here, you can do it, you can connect it, you can measure it, you can do whatever. For a legal statement, it should say, never do it, never try it under any circumstances, never let anybody to play with it. It's dangerous. Yeah, I had to do it, I had to say it. Yeah. Safety reasons. The world is full of sharks. <laughs> okay, now the guys are... We are winding the end. As far as the safety notes, I wasn't born American. I use the expression format and wording that is available to me at best of my abilities. So, if I use any wording, then you know, do it. Don't do it. Simple like that. Make it. Don't make it. <laughs> okay. By law, I'm required to make the statement. In this video, I'm gonna make that kind of comment a few times repeatedly. Any opinion expressed is my own based on my light bulb, 100 watts, 220 volts. High voltage transformer flyback and two diodes, set of the capacitors and a spark. Again, that schematic, a little bit more complicated, I'm gonna get into an easy way. That was with uh, trigger coil. Again, one of the concepts that we have been investigating in Lithuania was coil capacitor. Uh, this, what you see in here, is a coil capacitor. We have two main concepts. One is with the regular pickup coil, and again, that's the regular pickup coil. Two wires in the middle, one goes to the right, one goes to the left, two ends, one is never used. It serves as a balance. Some of the people say that I use incorrect wording counterpoints for it. Well, whichever way you name it. And you have a separate coil which is cut cells beneath that. The cut cells again look like that. That's the cut cells or caduces with two ends. Primer of the flyback transformer from old TV. Secondary, 
one wire only one wire only guys two diodes in reverse this capacitor has to be adjusted is critical uh, for the shape of the signal spark gap and then goes to the carousels this capacitor wasn't used but I does insist it's critical then the other side goes to the diodes the power is being delivered guys with one wire only to that carousels the other side goes to the ground it doesn't have to go to the ground it would be possible to get to the power level to power motorcycles or cars the spool of wire or the certain length of wire could serve as a counterpoise or the balance giving the same cycles we've been experimenting with the piece of wire that serve as a counterpoise and gave us the effect now The carousel looks like that. The wire goes like this, like this, like this, from the other side, like this. Uh, like I got this, confusing right. here. Back here. You have a number one and number one, which is one ribbon from the foil. The foil looks like that. This is the foil. Paper from one side. We are going to use a heavy duty scotch tape uh, to insulate it further and then wrap it around two layers of it. This is the foil. The second one is mark 2 and 2. And this is a second ribbon from the capacitor coil. The schematic diagram is mark one ribbon, second ribbon, one, one, which is one, one, two, two, which is two, two. LC1 is the symbol used for ribbon one, which is a inductive and capacitive component in it. LC Two is being used for the second one. How it works? We have two spark gaps. One is in here and one is in here. Again, we you see it better. Okay. The spark gap delivered the signal to the cutter cells then coil capacitor supposed to pick it up it does not guys the secret is this piece of metal which is aluminium or it could be also copper if we don't have it, it doesn't work if we don't have a piece of ferrite inside the caduceus doesn't work as well that could be also copper and we found that this was leading just a little we connected a second light bulb to one end of two going here this is two ribbon two connection of the foil and the wire was made by wrapping wire with a the foil. Then light bulb spark up, sparking to that piece of foil. This is also coil. And it's open one. If you go to this point, you see representation of that foil. The diameter of that foil is exactly X and X, which is the cross section of the caduceus. The P1 and P2 show exactly point of the cross sections. P1, this is the cross section. P, P2, this is the cross section. 
you see the small rod of the ferrite inside like if you put that inside the caduceus could be very very small we used close to 10 millimeters permeability of 2000 as you see the length of the ferrite is exactly cross sections of the foil that's why I represented it in here as the same name mentioned I have created theory, it is my theory of ferrite switching domain relay with delay memory and amplification that explain why it works and it does not work without it that might be long awaited secret of Tariel Kapenadze that we didn't see before. I will attempt to give you just a few brief words about how Basically it works. Basically, what it does is <clears throat> when you have a high voltage, you have a peak at the cross section of the cutter cells. When a peak shows on this P1, the domain starts to switch to the right. Before they are able to switch to the right, the next impulse shows up in P2. Then domain will start to compare P1 memory and P2 memory in between them. The memorized last shape in domain will then impact or self-regulate the, the outcome. The next impulse comes in. That serves as a hard drive, that serves as the memory of the last impulse, and that serves as an amplification factor. It does function as the regulator and relay at the same time because of its amplification factor. It interacts with the capacitive coil. Peaks on the carousel cross sections shows P1, P2, P1 or P2, P1 or P2 at the time. The permeability of the air is 1. The permeability of the ferrite is 2000. For my purpose, I start to experiment with heavy stuff. This is my ferrite. But any ferrite you put should work. So the theory would be explained in details later. The P1 equals X cross section, P2 e equals X cross section of caduceus. What we have on this part of the drawing. Tariel Capenadze in his aquarium video he used a very strange looking horizontally placed coil with a strange element inside that is a red in color. Then another coil was vertically Whenever we have a vertical and horizontal, I always tend to think about nuclear magnetic resonance. I do not have much evidence for this particular technology to stand on nuclear magnetic resonance principles. The one that I was dealing with from the ferrite yolk from the old TV, that one, um, I, I still stand on the theory of nuclear magnetic resonance. Again, he used two ribbons, or at least looks like, and a strange looking rod. Please pause on the forum um, that picture. Try to investigate that. That might be the secret of what's going on in Tariel Kapenadze um, uh, 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 aquarium box. This video was made by Wesley. Oh, I forgot something. Grand wire. 
the, 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 the ferrite rod of the transformer has to be grounded period if not the counter poise matching as the balance excuse my incorrect wording in this area for the scientists should be applied the next yellow drawing will be the first successful device built at the time when created the first video on this concept. The difference is that between two dies on left hand side you have a spar gap and pickup coil and caduceus is exactly the same. So just take it to consideration. Uh, the duty cycle is important, 33 or 37 percent that you have to remember, keep in mind. The output is the same, diode, capacitor, and the light bulb, uh, the spark gap. One may ask, so what is the difference? Look, for me it looks like, if you look at the caduceus, the caduceus has the voltage delivered, the two diodes, in similar fashion, the spark gap is a little bit differently done. The output coil is exactly the same. The answer might be, there is a need to deliver the two diodes, the right frequency and the right voltage. The secret is in carousel and pickup coil. That's all. The impedance match is very important factor. We're playing with the capacitors. Concentrate on the next picture pickup coil, starting from the middle. The winding should be done to the right and to the left at the same direction. The yellow caduceus in the middle didn't work. Disregard it. It was winded according to the theory. You got a Concentrate on the real working one. Picture of pickup coil. How do you wind it? You take the wire, you bend it on half and start winding one to the right hand side, one to the left hand side. This is actually a removable one. Instead of the small ferrite, I decided to use a huge one inside from both sides. A perfect coil. It's a real beauty. This is original coil of Ida's that he used when he was in the first presenting on my video, Aruna's video, working device. So at first we started with nothing, it wasn't working. And this is also the pickup coil. Now inside we have a caduceus, but the caduceus is not removable. It was he used a piece of plastic pipe and he used it the, the, the clear foil which is a, a scotch tape very heavy duty he rubbed it around rubbed it around rubbed it around after he put the caduceus caduceus has a two ends if you look at the number of wires it's one millimeter five wires together soldered at the end oh the my caduceus is inside we have used exactly the same wire. The only thing is that my is removable somehow. I put it in, <laughs> but I'm afraid to take it out. You see a part of caduceus in here. We had a problem with the spark jumping from the caduceus to the pickup coil. So we use a heavy foam. This is foam. I'm using my finger. This is a foam. And then we wind it a little bit larger diameter of the pickup coil. What we found is that the pickup coil is not as critical. The only difference between the original one is that I have four winds less on the right hand side and four winds less on the left hand uh, So what? Whatever, that's the left hand side. <laughs> All of the dimensions are important, extremely important. Again, follow the instruction. Okay, I was finally able to um, 
remove caduces from the pickup coil. That's the working caduces. Okay. So we have a five centimeters to the cross section. We from the edge. We have. A, you can calculate by yourself actually. I'm gonna go scan the edge to the cross sections exactly and then you see exactly what is the length of it okay I'm gonna flip that 180 degrees as you see that cross section on 180 degrees all of the information of the caduces were posted already so people should not have a problem with it you see that winding is continuous winding the returning wire band on the left hand side is not exactly in line with the first cross to the right start from here goes like that now you see that this goes beneath that that is important which one goes beneath what then we following that one we go to another it's beneath that one we go following another it goes beneath that one we going and following this it goes beneath that one we going further it goes up and now comes back and now it's on the top all the way on the top all the way on the top comes back all the way on the top all the way on the top I'm repeating that clip part of the clip again so you could see how the wires go. Important is the laying up. I use in few places on this video that Caduceus has four wires. I was wrong. Just don't want to uh, redo all of the things. It's the third time that I'm doing it. The Caduceus use a five wires. Again, five wires. Again, five wires of one millimeter. At the end, they are soldered together. One of the cross section is not in line with the rest of the cross section near the ends of the caduces. Look at it carefully. Theoretical approach to wind caduces did not work for us. We've got a working caduces the way that is done. We don't want to play with it. We don't want to experiment. We have a one cross section in here. And we have another cross section in here. But we have a nice cross sections in one line in here. This cardus has appeared to work. Six centimeters, one two, three, four millimeters, if I see it correctly with my glasses. That's the diameter. We used for that five wires, one millimeter each one. That were soldered on the end of it. Uh, I believe that's the preliminary information about the caduces. Now I'm comparing this caduces with the caduces that is inside of this one with the pickup coil on it. You see the pickup coil on it. One, two, three. Now remember, you start winding it from the middle. One wire goes this way, one wire goes this way. The best what you can do is wrap the electrical tape around the form the same way that Caduce is supposed to go. Memorize that right hand side 
cross is not in line with others, a little bit tilted, we want to repeat the successful winding. Power supply is bipolar power supply. This is the output transformer. It was taken from Russian washing the machine. Size of it, I'm gonna put my finger in here, <laughs> so you see how big it is. This is my finger. So this is the output transformer of the device. The total power drawn by this device is about 34 watts. The reason that I said on one of the videos 15 milliamps was that when you plug the load on it, the difference between the current without the load and the current with the load is approximately 15 milliamps. 1.5 milliamps. 15 milliamps. So you gotta look at it this way. The real power consumption is compared to the weight. You have uh, one book of Encyclopedia Britannica. Now your body represents a certain reservoir of energy. When you pick up that book, you're using certain amount of joules to hold it or carry on. If you have had not one seven kilograms book of Encyclopedia Britannica, but 10 of them, that would be 70 kilograms. My understanding is that in order for you to hold yourself in the vertical position, you have to use a certain amount of joules. In addition, you pick up a Encyclopedia Britannica and you're holding it, and you use a certain amount of joules. Then you put on the, on the bench the Encyclopedia Britannica that is equal to power consumption without the load. You estimate the amount of energy used when you have the Encyclopedia Britannica in your hand and now you see the difference. The difference is 15 milliamps which stands for approximately 3 it's 3 watts, if I remember correctly. It looks like we have approximately 3 watts in, about 100 watts out. Now some of the view, you folks had a question. Does the light bulb oh, give a full brightness or not full brightness? Guys, what difference does it make? If you had 3 watts in and 4 watts out, you would be happy. If you had 3 watts in and 6 watts out, you would be more happy. If you have a 3 watts in and approximately 100 watts out, let's say I was mistaken, 50 watts out, we either talking about error of measurement or great violation of the law of the conservation energy. But that might be another explanation for it. From the nice friends of mine, with the scientific background, I've got another explanation. That is, that we may not violate it, we just don't know the missing link. All we have to do is just calculate it. That's why I'm putting it on test. This coil, which is a caduceus, caduceus is in here, inside, and it's a pickup coil on it. This is a concept without coil capacitor, don't confuse that. It has three ends, one, two, and three. So two inside and one in the middle. Again, look at this one, and you're going to have a representation how that looks like. Okay, and the caduceus. I decided to use Vector Network Analyzer 3754B by Advantis. Input 
which is the receiver and the output which is a scanning generator this thing is scanning constantly frequencies from 10 kilohertz to 150 megahertz this is preliminary data it's not done in exact precise scientific way it's just for you to have an idea we have no other devices, no capacitors, no spark gaps connected. We want to find out what do we have. That device, when I press format, gives me a menu. Log magnitude, logarithmic magnitude, phase, delay, Smith chart. SWR, real, imaginary, phase, log magnitude and phase, log magnitude and delay, log magnitude and phase. We are in linear magnitude. As you see in here, we have a spectral component which starts from the left hand side the lowest frequency, the right hand side the highest frequency. I'm pressing the marker button to give me the indication of what's going on in here. After I did that, I have a choice. Maximum, minimum, target, ripple, filter, and some more. I'm switching right now to maximum. The maximum response is 9.759.35 of megahertz. So it's 9 megahertz and change. I'm gonna go to minimum. The minimum is here, and that is 36.757 of 55 megahertz. Format. We're going down more than two SWR and here's what we have standing wave ratio you have one significant peak that one significant peak peak I can go to the marker again 9.759 of megahertz you can always have a one peak and then peak next to it so marker and now I'm moving that to the next peak. This is a small peak. This peak is 21 megahertz and then we go to another peak. Okay, we got it. 45 megahertz. I switch myself to the instrument that I like the most. 4194A impedance gain phase analyzer. What we switched is we are at receiver and the transmitter in receiver channel and transmitter channel voltage I'm explaining you how it works the yellow one it says receiver channel the white one, it says transmitter channel. A transmitter channel is connected to the carousel, which is this one, the output. Okay, this is the wire. Now the receiver channel is connected to one half of the pickup coil as you remember from the schematic a pickup coil has never used this half this half use is used as a balance or in an antenna whichever way you call it on the counterpoise whichever name you use it for it we only utilize this part never this one but this is important that exists in the pickup coil 
this is our receiver now what are we getting in receiver part I gotta take a pen to show instead of my finger okay. again receiver channel is yellow this is what we have in here this is receiver channel the white one is the transmitter channel let's first concentrate on the transmitter channel what's going on on the input of the carousel when we go down with the marker where's the marker oh yeah this is the marker this is the marker we go on the top with it okay and we have a frequency change see we have a frequency change now we on the top of it 9750 of megahertz this is our peak remember we had a presence of another peak from the vector network analyzer we're going to that right now i love this uh, this equipment and this one is 21 megahertz and then we're going to another peak which is in here 42 megahertz there is a slight difference as i say it's a preliminary video this data is not purely scientific data it's just for me having a device hanging on the belt from my pants all the way up we see that the peak remains the same that's the maximum voltage on again transmitter channel at this frequency now we switch to display A and then we're gonna switch display B that looks a little bit different so we're going to that peak right now this is the maximum peak of voltage now uh, here's what we have 17.250 and change of megahertz it's the peak but when I switch the display on you see that we have on this frequency we have a transmitter channel showing us the maximum peak on this frequency you have a receiver channel show us at the maximum peak now what is important for us we need transfer of the energy in here so i may assume that the most important for us is to have a maximum voltage on the output which would be the pickup coil that's the pickup coil then we have a two peaks present of two peaks so i'm gonna go to the yellow one I can switch off the display A which is the transmitter and make sure that uh, we have only one now in here 43 megahertz that's one peak remember that we have had on the transmitter channel which is the white one a similar peaks now you see both of them light out so I'm gonna switch it off again and let's go to another peak this one is 68 megahertz you gotta remember when you introduce the capacitor to the center lead and the one of the right hand side winding of the pickup coil you're lowering the resonance frequency now you reg regulate and adjusting also the same story would be if you connect the capacitor across a pickup coil so we're not talking about the real megahertz that is delivered we could work on kilohertz with the same one all we want to have is a capacitive character of the network this is being called network capacitive character gives us the highest voltage the inductive character give us the highest. 
the lowest voltage. What I said, which actually I didn't check, each wind is 5 kilowatts, 5,000 volts, 5 kilowatts, each winding. So we have approximately 90,000 volts on the one hand side, 90,000 volts on the other ha uh, half side. Now, is that dangerous? Of course it is dangerous. Idas was playing with it. And as you see on the other video before, he was even touching it. There is a something that is being called cold electricity. At a certain frequency, you can touch with your hands. You have an uncomfortable feeling. Don't ever do it. I have to say that legal statement. We don't take any responsibility for anyone playing with it. So the legal statement would be never touch it, never do it. We deliver this information as the information only for education. Never try it. <laughs> okay, I said my legal statement. Okay, we don't take responsibility for it. It is only for licensed electrician, professional with the proper insurance and stuff and whatever, 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 whatever. Okay, but even those guys should not ever do it. Don't do it, guys. That's my legal statement. Nobody can catch me on it. Okay, so let's go back to the measurement. Okay, I'm going to switch to both of them. Again, this is very useful stuff. It shows input and output. Now I'm gonna change the uh, two impedance factors and I'm gonna try to show the capacitance that would be C and Q. Capacitance versus Q. Okay. Well, now I have to calibrate that okay I have no idea what I'm seeing right now something is strange in here this frequency peak I'm trying to get into it okay it's 19 19 megahertz now I'm going back with that, whenever you see that, that is helping me. Oh boy, what's going on over there? That is helping me to see where that dot is over there, just for me to easy to find out. Because sometimes it could be lost. Okay, we have a next peak in here. Okay, beautiful. And that is 400 kilohertz. Wow. Okay. It, of course, everything is jumping, so. Just preliminary one, don't pay attention too much to it, just what we can do with it. Now, when I'm going to be using a impedance meter, then I have on this device, this is a hut, this is the ground. So I can connect only one winding on it. The better way of doing it is when I switch that back to this one vector network analyzer by advanced the previous one was gain phase analyzer 419 curve 8 by Hewitt Park and try to go to the Smith chart format Here we go. Very strange data, but I'm gonna put the market on it. We don't have to read it. This shows how much impedance, how much a capacitance it does have at a certain frequency. So when we go back to the line magnitude, this is what we have had change a little bit not much 
as I say we don't have anything solid right now we go back to the highest peak what is the highest peak marker We have the frequency of 9.888 of megahertz. Now we switch to the Smith chart. So that would be format R plus JX. And now we switch the marker. Here is the data of the strange structure. At this frequency we have 73 point four whatever ohms on the primary impedance one 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 on the secondary impedance on the right hand side one point seven eight five millihenry of the inductance between the windings if I measure it properly. <laughs> I'm gonna correct myself all of the data is going to be available the time is 4 o'clock p.m. 4 o'clock p.m. time for me to finish that play my name is Wesley